Well, I'd like to welcome all of you here this morning. We begin the service. We'll sing number 64, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. <clears throat> As we begin a brand new year, this is the first Sunday, the first time that we have been able to come out and meet together to hear the Word of God in this year. And the story, that, the song that we just sung, Tell Me the Story of Jesus, 
That should be what we are desiring to hear and to know more about than anything else here upon the earth. So as we begin today, he says, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. And is that is how we look upon his word today? That that is what we are hungering and thirsting and desiring to know more about? How for our sins he was tempted, yet was triumphant at last. Tell of the years of his labor. Tell of the sorrow he bore. All the things that our Lord and Savior went through here upon the earth for us and then tell of the cross where they nailed him writhing in anguish and pain tell of the grave where they laid him tell how he liveth again the song covers it from the birth till he was raised again the story of Jesus Christ now there is a lot that goes on in between that birth and that resurrection. And there is a lot that has gone on from that resurrection until today. But we've each and every one today got an opportunity to know Jesus Christ. To know how he lived and how he would have for us to live here today as we go through this life to walk in accordance with his spirit and he says to draw near to me and I will draw near to you resist Satan and he has to flee from you I give to you a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind and I will never leave you I will be with you low until the end. These are words that are written throughout this book, the promises of God through his son, Jesus Christ, and the promises that others, the inspired word of God that they have written there about his work and how we should live. But most of all, having full faith in Jesus Christ, that's where it begins. It's having faith full faith and trust in him and taking it all away from us and desiring and accepting him as our savior and asking him to forgive us for our sins and then to lead God and direct us from that day forward in everything that we do as we say many times be careful what we say be careful what we do be careful where we go be careful in all of our actions, our dress, and whatever it might be. Be careful. Letting the Spirit of the Holy Ghost direct you. But first of all, we must have that new birth. That birth of the new Spirit within you that can only come through Jesus Christ. He says, I am the door. I am the way. There is no other way but through me. He says, if you knock, I will answer. And he is standing there at the door today knocking. Are you going to open the door? Have you opened the door and let him in? Have you truly done that? And are you truly walking in his spirit, in his love and in his his commandments, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Do the things that I ask to be done. Live in accordance with my word. And we see throughout the world today so much that people may proclaim Christianity, but their fruits and their life do not match with that. And he says those are deceivers. They are false believers. Satan is a deceitful being. He says that he will come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly he is a ravening wolf. Come to destroy you. 
And we can see, we can read how he tried to destroy our Lord and Savior. But it couldn't be done. Our Lord was able and he laid down that, his life on that cross. Because he says, to this end I came here to the earth. He came to go through all of those things for you and for me today. As we start out this new year, it only seems like it was just a very short period of time that I can remember standing here at the beginning of the year last year. And the question I believe was maybe asked and we made a suggestion there, but the question, how have I grown? How have I become closer and walking closer to the Lord now than I did a year ago. And that's the same thing that we need to be looking at today. How have I gone, grown closer to Him in this past year? And there has been a lot of things that has happened throughout this past year. It's been a very strange year in a lot of cases. There's been a lot of gladness, things that we have seen taken place that we can rejoice in. There has been a lot of sadness and grief, things that we look upon that we may not understand all about ourselves, but be reconciled to the Lord, whatever it might be. And say, He has never brought it. He will never allow anything to come upon us. But what there is a way for us to escape and to see victory with him. So let's just thank him for all he has done, for the wonderful opportunity that we have today, my friend. And let's look forward to the upcoming days, however long he sees fit for us to live here. You know, it may be only a short period of time for some of us. It may be a short period of time for all of us. It may be a long time before any of us leave this world. But be ready. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. Wait on Him. I believe we'll read the 27th Psalm to begin with here this morning. It's such an encouraging psalm to us. If we want to hear these things and live by them and listen to what the psalmist had to say, what David said. He said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And if that is the case with us, what do we have to fear? Nothing. Whatever takes place, we can be victorious and we can have eternal life. Whatever happens to our life here upon the earth. But he says, the Lord is the strength of my life. Now is that the case with each one of us? Are we as David said, as the Lord said that David was a man after his own heart? Is that what we are desiring above all things? And he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all of these other things will be added unto you. He is never going to leave us. His seed is not, David also said that he was young and now he was old, but he had never seen the righteous begging bread or forsaken. And I know that he will not forsake us today. He is there, and we can see victory with him. Examine me, O Lord. I'm sorry, it's the wrong one. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Why? Because the power of God was within him. He was protecting him. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. All the things of this world that could happen there to the king, to the people. But he says, in this will I be confident. What he's talking about is the, the confidence in what God could do for him in that day. And it's the same God. His son came here and he overcame everything for you and for me. And do we have confidence that because he lived, because he died, 
And because He overcame all things, and He says, I will send to you the Comforter. I'll send to you the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. I'll give you that new birth. Do you have confidence that you can receive that? You have received it, and you can use that power to overcome all things here upon the earth. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in His temple. One thing have I desired of the Lord. And there is one thing that is first and foremost. He says that we must love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that's what David was talking about here. There was one thing I have desired of the Lord. That will I seek after. Seek and you shall find, he said. Diligently be desiring help from him that I may seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord for of the, all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And we all should know who that rock is in our day. The rock is Jesus Christ. He will set us upon that with the Spirit of the Holy Ghost and the power that we talk about to overcome. He is the rock. He will set us upon that rock of Jesus Christ. He says, build upon that rock. And now shall thine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his, in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises to the Lord. There is nothing, there was things in David's life that was troublesome. There was things that he did wrong. He made some terrible mistakes. But the Lord was able to forgive him and he was able to flee to the Lord when those things and, and clean them up, have it burned up, have it cleaned up. He suffered the loss here in this life. He suffered many things naturally because of his sin. But now he says, and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. And that's what the Spirit of God will do for us today. Therefore will I offer in His tabernacle sacrifices of joy that I, I will sing. Yea, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart, said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hear, O Lord. Is that in our heart, in our mind constantly? Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, when I come to you in prayer, constantly throughout the day, wherever it might be, as you're going about your daily walk, you can be communicating with the Lord. When I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. I want us, everyone that is here today, it doesn't matter who you are, how young or how old or whatever, I want you to understand those things. The Lord is saying, seek me, come to me. He is there with a reached out hand to each and every one. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are. He is there and he died on the cross for you. He was resurrected back to life for you. He is there when thou saidest, Seek ye my face. 
Is your heart, is your mind, is your soul saying, My heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Are you seeking after His will to be done in you today? Is what he is asking. And this is what David said that he did. That when the Lord said, Seek Him, he says, Let your will be done in me. That is the way that I interpret that, is what he's saying. Unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. I will seek out the ways of you, Lord, not the ways of man. I will not be seeking out the things and to be conformed to the things of this world. But I will be seeking to be conformed to the ways of Jesus Christ and God the Father. Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Thy words, Lord, will I seek. Thy way, Lord, will I seek. That's what we need to be saying today. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not. Neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. And I hope that everyone knows here that you and I cannot work out our salvation on our own. It is through God, through Jesus Christ, that we are able to receive that free gift of salvation. He says, neither forsake me. And he will not if we diligently seek him. If we ask him, he will not forsake us. We may forsake Him. We may reject His Word just as others have all the way along. But He will not reject us as long as we desire His Spirit here upon the earth. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. You know, something as close as a father and a mother may forsake you. But if you truly are walking with him, he says, My, the Lord will take you up. If you have that desire. And he says that these things will bring a division among families. He says those that walk with him, he says it will divide two against three and three against two. Right there because of someone walking close to God. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Listen to that. Teach me thy way, O Lord. Is that what we're desiring today? He had a true desire of that, David did. For the Lord to teach him his way and to get our way and our will out of the way. And to walk in the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Teach me thy way, O Lord. And lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Now what is that path? In the New Testament he talks about these things. I believe the Lord, he speaks about that path. He says that path is straight and that path is narrow. And that gate is straight and narrow. And it leads to everlasting life. But he says Satan is there. And he is there trying to get all of those that is walking on that path. He is trying to destroy them. He is trying to deceive them off of that path. He says there that there is another path there. He says it is broad and wide and the gate is wide. And it is straight. And he says who is there? The wicked, the unrighteous. And he says, many there will be on that road. And where does it lead? It leads to destruction. This path here that he's talking about, lead me in a plain path. It is marked very plain and clear for the righteous. They have the eyes to see, and their eyes are singled on that, and their body is full of light, full of righteousness. But he says, if your eye is not singled upon that, your eye is evil, and that whole body is full of evil, 
full of unrighteousness. And great will be the destruction of that. He's laid it out for us so plain and clear throughout his whole book with different writers, different authors, whatever, of how that he, his mercy is and his mercy is there for the righteous and his mercy will endure forever for the righteous. But his mercy will cease for the wicked and unrighteous. And his wrath will be rained out upon them. Deliver me not over into the will of mine enemies. For false witness are risen up against me. And such as breathe out cruelty. He will be, in the, and we again remember, he is there to protect us from Satan. And David just begging him, deliver me not over into the will of mine enemies. And that's what we need to be looking for today and asking to deliver us not over to Satan, but give us that power to overcome him. For false witnesses are risen up against me and there is false witnesses today rising up against his work and against his church, against his spirit to try to destroy those things. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I had fainted, he said. And we would. We would be faint of heart. We would not have any courage to go on and fight against Satan if we did not have the power of God, if we did not know Jesus Christ. He said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord. He had seen the power of God in his day and what he could do. Even as a young child, the mighty power of God was working strong in David. And it can work in a young person today. It can work in a middle aged. It can work in an older person. It can work in one who is very aged. And we can see those things all the way along. That his, his love and his mercy is there. But the righteous without him will faint. There will be no righteous without him. Let me reframe that. If you do not have that righteous spirit, you will faint. But with the spirit of righteousness there, you will not faint in the way of Satan. If you will use that power, he might still march upon you. But flee to Jesus Christ. Beg him to come in and take control. And to give you strength to overcome Satan. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And that's what I was speaking of there in the very beginning before I turned to this. Wait on the Lord. What does the psalmist say? Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage today. And I would encourage each and every one of you today. The opportunity is there. The hand is reached out. Just say, Lord, save me. You remember the story of Peter? How did he saw the Lord walking on the water? And he said, Lord, if it's you, let me come and walk and come on the water to you. And the Lord said, come on. Peter stepped out of the boat, and I believe that he began to walk upon that water. But then he became afraid. And he fainted. But he knew what to do. He cried out to the Lord, Save me, Lord! And the Lord reached out his hand and he picked him up and he lifted him up and put him safely back into the boat. And he went on to see victory. He made mistakes, but he saw victory because he trusted in Jesus Christ. And that's what you and I can do today. 
Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage because he is there. And if you fall, fall with your feet in the path and rise and go again. Never be discouraged. And never give up. Rise. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Isn't that a wonderful thing to think about? Being strengthened spiritually. And have that peace and that joy that he says that I'll give to you. And have that hope of eternal life. I say, wait. I say, on the Lord. Don't try to get ahead as Saul did and lost out. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And see victory in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. <clears throat> Let's turn over to Luke. This is the sixth chapter of Luke. We'll read some there. Let's start at the 20th verse, the sixth chapter of Luke. And he lifted up his eyes. Now here he was. And the whole multitude sought to touch him. And there went virtue out of him and healed them all. There was a great multitude of people following him. A great multitude there, a lot of them had come to be healed naturally. I hope that there was a lot that had come there to be healed spiritually. To put, they had their faith in him that he could heal them. And I hope that they had their faith that he could heal them of their sins. He could forgive them of their sins. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and he said... Blessed be you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. And I believe there that he's not just necessarily talking about being poor naturally. He's talking about being poor in your own self spiritually. Not looking upon yourself that you are anybody or that you can do anything spiritually on your own. Blessed be you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. That those that seek Him, those that seek the honor and the glory from Jesus Christ to Him. Yours is the kingdom of God. You're poor in your own sight. But strong and mighty in the confidence of God. Yours is the kingdom of God, He says. Not those self-righteous people that look upon themselves as look how righteous we are. Look what we are doing Look what we are accomplishing. Be in the humble spirit. Serving Jesus Christ. Blessed are, the, are ye that hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are ye that hunger. Do you understand what he's talking about there also? He's talking about that spiritual hungering. Hungering after the spiritual meat. That strong meat that he has to offer to us. That we can live by. We can hear. If you are still struggling with that. If you are still needing that sincere milk of the word. Continue to take it and grow in it. Just as that young child. It has to have that milk. But it begins to grow. And it begins to get more mature, and then it can take on more and more of the strong meat that will give him more and more nutrients that that body can grow and become a man or a lady and can have knowledge and understanding. And that's what he's looking for us, to be hungering for righteousness' sake. For you shall be filled, a promise of Jesus Christ, if you are diligently seeking that, you are hungering for it, ye shall be filled, he says. He will not withhold it from you. He will give it to you. 
for you shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for you shall laugh. What is he talking about there, weeping now? He's talking about weeping your lost condition. Weeping about your unsaved, wicked, evil condition that you came here upon the earth in. And that is every single one of us was born in that. And what does he say? He says, weep over it. Take it to the Lord. And then, for you shall laugh. We shall have great peace and great happiness when he fills us with that peace. Gives us that new birth. The old man goes away. The new man now is there. That new man. The power of God. Right within you. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. And when they shall separate you. From their company. And shall reproach you. And cast out your name as evil. For the son of man's sake. When we look around and we see throughout history and, and hear with our Lord and Savior, how that all that he did good, and man rejected him, man cast him out, man put him on that cross and nailed the spikes through his hands to take his life. Because he preached and taught the truth, the word of God, and man rejected it. When you go and you read through the Word, this Bible never says there that there will just be everybody come and accept Jesus and accept His way. That's what He's saying right now. He says, blessed are ye when men shall hate you. When you are walking with the Lord, when you have had that new birth, and men hate you because they see that Spirit of God within you, and it condemns their wicked way, and they hate you because of it. He says, blessed are ye because you are walking and living as Jesus Christ would have you to live for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. He's just encouraging us and telling us what we can have here and what we can have when we leave this world. He says, rejoice in that day. Rejoice in the day that you see the Spirit so strong within you that man hates you, that Satan hates you. Leap for joy. Not because of that, but leap for joy because you have received that power. You're not leaping for joy because of someone else living in wickedness. You have a great desire that if there's anything that can be done for them, let it be done just as he said and just as Stephen said, forgive them not, they know not what they do. And that's the way we would want to do here for anyone that hated us so much because we were able to present the Spirit of the Holy Ghost within us. He says now, For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner did their fathers also unto the prophets. And we can see how that Many, many of the people there, the prophets, were killed because of the things that they taught against man, the way man was living. And that has happened all the way along. It has come all the way through. 
after Christ was here upon the earth and all the way up until now, there has been people persecuted for speaking the truth, for preaching the truth, for living the truth, for just reading the truth. They have been persecuted. And they have been put to death in a lot of cases. And in a lot of cases, because of some of those people there that did those things, that lived in that manner, and they rejoiced in the work so much that they were willing to risk their life so that others may be able to have the Word of God. And that's how you and I can have this Word today that's written right here in front of us. That there was people that desired that so much that they risked their life and that they were put to death because they translated this Bible so you and I could read it today. We may take things for granted sometimes. But the love of God was with them. And they were able then, as they were put to death, I believe it was the man that was put to death, for interpreting this Bible into English. He said right as he was being burned, he says, Lord, open the mind of the king. They do not understand. He was not railing out upon them because he knew where he was going. He could rejoice because great reward was for him just over in the glory land, just a few short moments from now, he would be out of temptation. He would be away from Satan. He would be away from the things of this world. But woe unto you that are rich. Now what's he talking about there? Woe unto you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. He's talking about being rich in your own self. Being rich in your mind that I am living a life I don't have to depend upon Jesus Christ. I don't have to depend upon the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. I am living a moral life and I can live good enough. I am rich enough of my own self to enter into the kingdom of God. And he says, you've received your own consolation. You have received all you're going to receive right here in this life is what he's saying. That's all you're going to receive is that false hope that you have because you feel like that you are rich spiritually and you know nothing. You are nothing. Woe unto you that are full, for you shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. All of these things he's looking upon to are people that feel like that they've got it all under control by themselves. But there will come a time when they will mourn and they will weep because they are in a lost condition forever. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets be careful of the flatterer. I believe that's what John Bunyan writes about in Pilgrim's Progress is to be careful with him. It can lead you away. You get to feeling too much of your own good. But he says, I say unto you which hear, love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Now these others here, 
They were hearing, but they were not walking in it. They, were, they did not have the ears to hear. They had heard. They had seen. He was preaching. He was teaching to them. But now he's saying to another group there, he says, But I say unto you which hear, I say unto you which hear the word of God and believe upon it, and are willing to accept it as the truth of God. Love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them which despitefully use you. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's what our Lord said. And that's what Stephen said. That's what others... That is their mind, the righteous mind. When people downgrading them, when people doing things against them, Father, forgive them. Pray for them which despitefully use you. Father, if there's anything that can be done to open their mind, let it be that they may have eternal life and that they may get out of the condition that they are now in. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And to him that taketh thy coat, taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as you would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. And I believe that just goes and he tells all about those things there, of how we should be living our life here upon the earth. But it's all summed up there when he says, And as you would that men should do to you, do you also to them likewise. If that spirit was dwelling throughout the world today, there would be no controversy. There would be no murderers or thefts. And all of those things. It would be all taken away if we all lived by this. That if you did unto men as you would have them do unto you. It's saying a lot. Is that in our mind today, in everything that we do, in our business dealings, whatever it might be, is that how we're looking upon things? For if you love them which love you, what thank have you? For sinners also love them that love them. He just now bringing it to their attention. He says, now, I want you to stop and think about your mind, the way that most men would look upon it. Is I want to do, I'm not going to live by that, that if you love, for if you love them which love you, I mean, and as you would that men do unto you, do you also unto them likewise. That's not in the human nature to live in that way. And now he's going on and he's explaining that. He says, yes, that's not your nature. That sinful nature that is within you is to just love those that love themselves. He says sinners do that. And that's the nature of man. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank you have for sinners also do even the same. If the only thing you do is, well, somebody did something good for me, I'm going to do something good for them. But you never go out here and, and do as he'll stay here in some of his other... And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have you? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. Do you see what he's talking about? Do you see how he's just showing you that the nature of man, that sinful nature within him, is to do things that would look good to the world? That people can stand back and say, did you look and did you see what so-and-so did? But what was the mind? Was it done in a manner that, yes, I'm going to do these things so that maybe I will receive something for it. I'll receive some honor. I'll receive some glory. 
That should not be in it at all. There may be glory bestowed upon someone because of what they have done. But it wasn't their will that that was done. But because of them following and walking close to Jesus, living in the way that he says to live, there may be some honor bestowed upon someone. But don't let that honor become something that you look upon yourself. Just look upon it as something that was bestowed upon you because you were walking in the Spirit, because the Spirit of God was leading you in it. Not that you were doing those things of your own selfish way. But love you, your enemies. Do good and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. And you shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Let that Spirit, the Spirit of God, is he your Father? If God is your Father, then you've got that Spirit of the Holy Ghost. And he says, if God is merciful, you be merciful also in all the things that you do. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Now I want you to think about some of the things. Now he's saying there, judge not. Do not judge someone by yourself or by your own works. But he says, by their fruits you shall know them. He says, and you shall not be judged not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Do not condemn people because of what your works are. You can condemn sin if it goes against the truths of God. Do not ever compromise with sin in any way, shape, or form. But not by your lifestyle. Not by the way you live. But condemn it by the Word of God. Let the Word of God condemn it, not you. Give. And it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Just treating people in the way that you would want to be treated yourself. And seeking the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And what will he do with you? He says, you seek me with that way and I will give to you abundantly. What does he say about how that if you are evil and you know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give to the righteous? You're dealing with a righteous God. A loving God. A merciful God. And if we in our weak, in our wicked ways know how to do these things to give to our children or our whoever we desire, how much more with His undefiled love and his perfect mercy and peace for all of us will he give to you, to those that ask him. We've got to ask, we've got to seek, and we'll be able to find. And he spake a parable unto them Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? And think about that. 
How could the blind lead someone that is blind? You would very quickly see that that would be somebody there would do this. They said they'd fall into the ditch. They'd run into the walls. They'd, they would not be able to accomplish anything. So what he's telling us here is don't be led by the blind. Don't be led by Satan. Satan is blind to righteousness. And we have come here blind. We've got to have our sight. So where do you want to go to get that sight? Do you want to go and continue to be in living after Satan? And living and following him? And you just stay in the blind then and you can never find that straight and narrow path that leads to eternal life. But you can say, yes, I am blind. I need my sight. Seek out Jesus Christ. And He will show you that path. He will give you eyes to see that path. And you can stay on that path. Because He is not blind. He has perfect sight, perfect wisdom, perfect understanding. And knows how to keep you there. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. I want you to listen to that. Who is your master? Is it Jesus Christ or is it Satan? The disciple is not above his master. Nope. But everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. That we that have been able to receive of that spirit of the Holy Ghost, that new birth, will be as our master, Jesus Christ, and God the Father. He says you will be a son, an heir to the throne of God, an heir to God, just as Jesus Christ. That's what he's offering to all of us today. God is. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceiveth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite! Cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull the mote out of thy brother's eye. Be in a clean condition is what he's saying. Work with your brother, but be sure that you're not looking upon him as some little small something that he's involved in out there. And you out here living in wickedness, but in your self-righteousness you go and try to straighten him out. He says, clean up yourself first. Get that wickedness out of your life. That then you might be able to go and speak to your brother. And to be able to help him, to encourage him to pull out, to get out of that sin that he was in. Look to him. Put our faith and trust in him. Reminded, I want to turn as we're talking about what he can do and what he's, how he can forgive and, and what he'll do for all of us. Turn to Revelations. The third chapter of Revelations. We'll start reading at the 14th verse of the third chapter of Revelations. And unto the angel of the church in the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. Now he knows all about us, and he knows whether or not we have accepted him. We know whether or not that we have, we are proclaim. he knows whether or not we are proclaiming those things, but then not living in accordance with it. He says, now I know your works. You're neither cold nor hot. You 
are lukewarm. So then, because that thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. And I believe he's talking about people there that was proclaiming to know Jesus Christ, but did not know him. And he says now, I will spew you out of my mouth. You, were, you have nothing there. There's nothing righteous there about that. So because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That's what he's saying. He says, you do not understand it. You're talking these things, but you're not living in accordance with it. He says, you are rich in your own mind. That's what he was talking about. And in the other place there is what Christ was saying. That those that were rich in their own ways. And that's what he's saying here. You're rich in your own ways. And you're increased in goods of your own goods. And have need of nothing, you think. You don't need God. You don't need the power of, of God through Christ. You don't need to accept Him. Not that thou art, and you don't know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Your sins are totally exposed. I counsel thee to buy of me fire tried, of, of gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. Now he's talking about a different richness here. He's talking about rich spiritually. He's, now he plainly called these people out of where they were in their sin. And now he says, now I cancel you. I tell you, I beg you to buy of me. Come to me. Buy gold that is tried in the fire. Get that spirit. Come to me and receive of that Spirit of the Holy Ghost. That thou mayest be rich spiritually and white raiment. That thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with thy salve. That thou mayest see as many as I love. I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Now look, this is what Jesus was telling these people, that he's saying that I am going to just spew you out. You are nothing. But look what he was giving them, the opportunity now to clean up their condition. Just listen to me what he's saying that thou mayest be rich and white raiment thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with thy salve that thou mayest be able to see how that white raiment upon that he says that those that are righteous will give that they will be able to have as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. That's what he's asking for us all. To be zealous of, of his works. To be zealous of good works through Jesus Christ. And repent of our sins. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I stand at the door and knock. That is him there standing at the door, knocking, wanting us to open that door so he can come into our life. I stand at the door and knock. And listen carefully. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him, and he with me. 
If any man hear my voice, I will come unto him. If they hear my voice and open the door, you got to do something. You got to go to him. You got to ask him. You've got to repent to be able to know him, to be able to receive what he's saying. I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Isn't that a wonderful, encouraging thought? Encouragement that he's just pouring it out to us what his love is. Even though we're in a, these people were in a bad condition, look at, the, look at what he was doing for them. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. We just talked about being an heir with Jesus Christ. To him that overcometh. And how can we overcome? Only by the blood of Jesus. We can overcome Satan. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. And who can, who can be in that throne? Who can enter into the kingdom of God? He says there is nothing that is defiled that will enter into the kingdom of God. So we must keep that holy tabernacle, that spirit of the Holy Ghost clean within us. Even as I overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And what I'm saying today, he that has an ear to hear the Word of God today, hear what the Spirit is proclaiming, accept it, Live by it. Walk in that spirit. Lay aside that carnal mind. Lay aside the things of this world that will so easily set us at distance from Him. And put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, not in ourselves. But let him make you rich spiritually. That you'll be able to see victory in the end. Victory in Jesus Christ. We'll bring this meeting to a close. We'll sing number 336. What a friend. And there's no greater friend that we can have today than Jesus Christ. Number 336. What a friend.
we can find that solace only in Jesus Christ our Lord. He is a friend, and let's remember that. He is the only friend that we can truly depend upon. I present you to God the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord and present you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost and may the Lord receive. Let us all, let's start this new year People make New Year's resolutions all the time and they break them. But let's start it off as walking closer to Him. Just each day, put our faith and trust in Him. Each hour, each moment, letting Him direct us in all things. And we can see victory by the blood of Jesus Christ let us pray to God the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord thank you for all you've done for us thank you for the many blessings that we have received thank you for your son thank you for your words of exhortation thank you for the encouragement that you have given to us just put it, let us all put it into your hands. And those that are struggling today, Lord, be with them. If there's anything that can be done to help them, and those that are an enemy of your people today, help them to see your truths and walk with you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like for you to remain here just a second.